Hello, I am Ahmad, and in this playlist, I'm going to talk about the fundamental uh, criteria of designing structures relevant to Eurocode 1990 and 1991. We start with the load combination explanation and the codes uh, recommendation, and also considering one national annex here in Finland, but it can be applied to any other national annexes which are using Eurocode. We will continue with the calculation of votes and then we will go through one simple example for a shelter design at the end of this uh, playlist. As we know, we have different kind of uh, load cases coming to the structure. It can be dead load self-weight or permanent action, variable actions like uh, the useful load of the a structure like live load it can be a residential building or other kind of buildings and also uh, wind a snow load other actions might come to the structure that should be considered with a partial factor for designing situation we have two main um, load combinations which is for ultimate limit state uh, relevant to equilibrium and also dimensioning the elements and also serviceability limit state or SLS that comes from the comfort use of the uh, structure. In Eurocode 1990, class 6432 combinations of actions for persistent or transient design situations in item 3, we have this uh, equation 610 that can be written alternatively for S structure and geo limit state, the less favorable of the two following expression, uh, 610A and 610B. Plus implies to be combined with summation, implies the combined effect of, and the zeta is a reduction factor for unfavorable permanent action G. So G represents the uh, self weight and the load. So the difference between these two is that when we model a structure, self weight represents the weight of that. When we apply dead load to the structure, meaning that we have secondary elements, for example, in concrete structures for roofs and for ceilings, we might have some kind of S grid, which is not a structural element but it's for finishing layer and it's counted as a permanent action it is called dead load usually i model in two separate uh, load cases one is for the cell weight the weight of the structure and the other one only for dead load coming from the other part of the structure which are not load bearing qk1 is the variable action and is uh, usually the leading one or the main one and qkj j greater than one is again variable action as accompanying action for example when we are talking about uh, the worst case scenario of uh, load combination assume that your leading load is live load and then we have a snow load and also wind load for a structure but in the ultimate limit state, the characteristic value of these individual actions might not apply to the structure at the same time. For example, assume that the snow load is given for uh, the highest value every 50 years that might happen. The wind load as well for 50 years period, the uh, return period is given by the code and it might not be a typical wind load. And also, for example, for a residential building, the load is 2 kN per square meter, resulting in 200 kg per square meter. When we want to combine these, necessarily these three actions at the same time with the maximum value of given by the code is not happening. The worst case is snow, the worst case wind, and also the maximum use of the structure at the same time might not happen as a result we take one of these actions to be the worst case scenario for leading which is coming with this qk1 and the rest are coming with the factor size zero which is coming in the other table we will come back to this later 
So this is the general uh, equation here. We can see that the further information for this choice is given in Annex A. If we go to the same part of the code in uh, Annex A23, ultimate limit states verification for fatigue is not included. Design values of actions in persistent and transient design situation. Uh, number one, the design values of actions for ultimate limit states in the persistent and transient design situation expression 69a to 610b should be in accordance with table a to 4a to c so we have three tables here the values in tables a to c may be changed in the national annex for different reliability levels uh, c section 2 and annex b in applying table a to c in cases when the limit state is very sensitive to variations in the magnitude of permanent actions the upper and lower characteristic values of these actions should be taken according to clause 4122p uh, for equilibrium according to 3 you need to use set a from the tables for structures excluding geotechnical actions set b and for uh, a structural design including geotechnical action you need to use set 3 but there are three other approaches that you need to follow and uh, it's not the part of this uh, video or playlist but I have a plan to record the foundation design according to Eurocode 1997 later Coming back to this part, typically when we are talking about one element, for example, a beam which is made of concrete, uh, most likely the value of the weight of this element would not change because it's almost the same. But sometimes the structure is very sensitive to, to the permanent action. For example, if we are talking about bridges which are with a deck, and they have some kind of cantilever at both ends so this overhang might be uh, at some point very favorable for the rest of the structure if your a structure is very sensitive to permanent action then you need to consider upper and lower level of the permanent load we can have a look on 4122 in clause 412, characteristic values of action, uh, item number two, the characteristic value of a permanent action shall be assessed as followed. If the variability of G can be considered as a small, one single value GK may be used. And in the next uh, clause, it is given as G mean value might be enough. But if the variability of G cannot be considered as a small, two values shall be used. An upper value GK superior and a lower value GK inferior. Uh, the main reason is that when we are talking about, for example, concrete, the unit weight is given 25 kilonewton per cubic meter. But this value is according to several tests, and this is the mean value. But it can be slightly more than 25 or slightly less than 25. For that reason, if Again, if your structure is very sensitive to permanent action, then we need to separate these two. Coming back to Annex A. In set A, which is relevant to equilibrium, we have these uh, factors, gamma G superior, gamma G inferior, gamma Q1, and gamma G superior is 1.1, inferior 0 0.9, and gamma q is 1.5 where unfavorable and zero where it is favorable in note number two in cases where the verification of a static equilibrium also involves the resistance of structural members as an alternative to two separate verifications based on table a and b a combined verification based on table a may be adopted if allowed by the national annex you have to check if the relevant national annex allows it. With the following set of recommended values, the recommended values may be uh, altered by the national annex. 
1.35 for superior, 1.15 for inferior, 1.5 for unfavorable live load, and 0 for favorable. Provided that applying inferior value of gamma equals 1 both to favorable and unfavorable part of permanent action does not give a more unfavorable effect. So this is applied when you are using just one equation for both uh, equilibrium and also for the structural design. We have also set B. In set B, uh, which is relevant to a structural analysis, we have these two separate tables, 610 and 610A, 610B. And it depends on national annexes, for example, for Finnish national annex. 610A and 10B are recommended to be used. Note number one, the choice between 610 or 610A and B will be in the national annex. In case of 610A and 610B, the national annex may, in addition, modify 610A and, uh, to include permanent actions only. Note number two, for example, here we can see that the Zeta times gamma is 1.15. For example, if you are following Finnish National Annex, this 1.15 is coming from this value. Note number three, the characteristic values of all permanent actions from one source are multiplied by gamma g superior if the total resulting action effect is unfavorable. And gamma g inferior if the total resulting action effect is favorable. For example, all actions originating from the cell fate of the structure may be considered as coming from one source. This also applies if different material are involved. For understanding this part, assume that you have uh, this kind of beam which is under cell fate or dead load and also live load. So if we are interested in maximum positive bending moment between B and C. So we are interested in maximum bending moment between B and C. This is your unfavorable action that you are looking for. For this reason, we can have two different beams and put the load here. We know that the load on two spans would result in maximum positive bending moment in each span. In this case, this value is completely unfavorable. As a result, based on the code, we just used gamma superior times gk. When it comes to live load, on the other hand, so having live load here would result in decreasing the bending moment in the span of BC. So A, B, C, A, B, C. Let's sketch the bending moment in each span. This is the bending moment diagram. And here also this is bending moment diagram. You can see that if you put the live load in a span A, B, it is resulting in negative bending moment between B and C. So this action is called favorable. Similarly, if I put the load only a span BC, the bending moment diagram will be this way. Here you can see that the location of live load is very important. As a result, we assume that the live load, which is favorable, is not coming to AB. But for the permanent load, we can assume that it's completely with the resultant or total result is giving the unfavorable action. As a result, your beam for being designed will be this way. Gamma superior times GK. And then we have also only live load in this case, which is gamma Q times Q live load, whatever it is. But if your structure is very sensitive to permanent load, then it is much more conservative if we go with this assumption. That here we have gamma superior gk superior and the other side we have gamma inferior gk inferior and for the live load we have only this load gamma q times and the other span is without any live load so this is explanation about these nodes here we have to use for example one value of gamma g superior or inferior based on what we are looking for 
and also from the other note uh, if the variability of g cannot be considered as a small two values shall be used upper value of g k superior and lower value of g k inferior the value of these are given in the code you can check now let's have a look on the load combination and find out how it should be done assume that a structure is under different load cases including load case number one dead load load case number two live load category a load case number three a snow load load case number four wind in positive x load case number five wind in negative x load case number six wind in positive y and load case number seven wind minus y so if you apply these uh, load cases in any software and use automatic load combination you might see plenty of load combinations and here we are going to cover based on uh, Finnish National Annex how many load combinations we need to consider in Finnish National Annex uh, in table 3 design values of the actions durability of the structural members and geotechnical load bearing capability set B should be used and here you can see that 610A and 610B are recommended to be used for permanent actions 1.35 kfi times gk superior and uh, the other one is gk inferior i believe that this q should be g because it is for permanent action 610b 1.15 kfi qkr or gki so i think that this should be gki gki uh, superior 0.9 gk inferior 1.5 kfi q k1 and 1.5 kfi size 0 q k j kfi is uh, determined based on the consequent class of the structure for example if it is consequent class 1 then the value of 0 0.9 will be kfi this is for Finnish National Annex. In other cases, you can check the main Eurocode or the relevant Finnish National Annex. CC2, it is 1. And CC3, which is 1.1. These values are coming according to the uh, complexity of the structure. For example, when you are designing a warehouse, it might be completely different when you are talking about a hospital. So they are with different uh, consequent classes and as a result the complexity of the structure and also the damages that might happen um, then these values would be taken into account. So if you are talking about category A this is consequent class 2 as a result KFI for us if it's not going to be with very long spans or uh, very complicated structure, very ordinary one, KFI can be taken as one. The other factor that you might be interested to find out here and there from the relevant uh, national annex is size zero. This uh, factor is given in main Eurocode and also in the national annexes. Table one, this is taken from Finnish National Annex. You can find the similar table in Eurocode and also other relevant national annexes. The load is given, then psi zero and other factors psi one and psi two are as are given as well. For example, category A areas in domestic and residential buildings, psi zero is 0 0.7. For example, for a snow load, it doesn't matter if a characteristic value of a snow is less than 2.75 or greater than that. For psi zero, they are the same. And for the wind load, it is 0 0.6. So what you need to point out is psi zero for live load is 0 0.7 psi 0 for a snow is 0 0.7 and psi 0 for wind will be 0 0.6 now coming back to our case we have dead load live load a snow wind x positive wind x negative wind y positive wind y negative and we have two equations 1.35 
gk superior plus 0.9 gk inferior and the other one is 1.15 gk superior plus 0.9 gk inferior i assume that kfi is 1 plus 1.5 q k1 plus 1.5 summation of q k j times size 0 j j greater than 1 necessarily you don't need to calculate all the load combinations that i'm writing here and perhaps you can find out which one is the most critical also some software like rfm has the capability that you can decrease the number of load combinations so if we start with the most unfavorable actions then it will be 1.35 d for the first equation and then you need to assume which load case is going to be your leading action i assume that the leading action is live load so if live load is leading action then the combination will be 1.15 d plus 1.5 live load this is one load combination regardless of other actions uh 1.15 d plus 1.5 l and now i include a snow as a company load so it will be 0 0.7 psi of a snow times a snow and then i assume that the company load will be wind which will be 1.15 d plus 1.5 l plus 0 0.6 wind x positive it will come with wind x negative wind y positive wind y negative and the last is accompanying all other actions which will be 1.15 d 1.5 l 0.7 s plus 0.6 w x positive w x negative w y positive w y negative so in total here we will have four for this case four for this case two for this case so in total it will be 10 load combinations this is based on live load is the leading load the next one is assuming that a snow is the leading load so 1.15 d plus 1.5 a snow the same concept the next one will be 1.15 d 1.5 s 0.70 percent of live and then it will be 1.15 d 1.5 s 0.6 wind x positive wind x negative wind y positive wind y negative and also combination of all which will be 1.15 d plus 1.5 s 0.7 l 0.6 wx positive wx negative wy positive wy negative so it will be again 10 load combinations up to here the next is taking into account that wind in x direction is the leading so in this case how many load combinations we will have it will be 1.15 d plus 1.5 wind x positive the next one 1.15 d 1.5 wx positive plus 0.7 l 1.15 d plus 1.5 wx positive 70 percent of a snow and 1.15 d 1.5 s wx positive 0.7 l 0.7 s so wx cannot be combined with w why as a result here we have only four load case load combinations for wx positive and this is wx positive the same wx negative wy positive wy negative so here we have one from here and for leading load to be live load and for leading load to be a snow and four times four when it comes to a uh, wind load to be the leading so it, in total 37 load combinations might be needed you might ask that uh, why we are not taking for example the maximum of this typically two or three load combinations or maximum four load combinations might be the most critical in many cases but this is just to understand how to consider if you want to consider the most favorable action then you need to change the value to 0 0.9 with the same concept it will be 37 but 
you need to know that if you are talking about favorable action, uh, perhaps those actions that are in favorable uh, condition, for example, live load or a snow should be taken into account and the value might be zero in the load combination and it would change the number of load combinations. That's the end of this video. Uh, we went through the basics of load combinations, specifically about ultimate limit state. And also we went through Finnish National Annex for calculation or uh, understanding how many load combinations we need for different load cases. In the next video, I will go through one example to explain how to apply these in a simple uh, determinate overhang beam. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.